Welcome to Health Strategy TV. Today I'm joined by Katie Davis, who's the Managing Director of Health Informatics. Uh, welcome, uh, Katie. Thank you. Uh, Katie, there's a real need to uh, transform the shape and focus of ICT uh, across the NHS. Um, what will be the future strategy for achieving this transformation? That's probably too big a question for me to answer easily, but I think I'd make two really important points about the future strategy. The first is the importance of ownership, ownership in the right place. Now, where in the future that is a single big national initiative, standards, the spine, the N3 network, that will still be in the centre, in this case in the NHS Commissioning Board. But where it's about local IT, local initiatives, local outcomes, the ownership should also be local. Now, sometimes local organisations might have shared requirements and they might well want to join up and work together. And that can be facilitated by others, including the commissioning board, if it's, if it's the right thing to do. But the important thing is that local organisations take ownership, take responsibility, understand their requirements, what they want and need, and then pull help and support from the centre as required, as opposed to being told top down what it is they want and need and having it done for them. I'd make a second point alongside that, though, and that's about really the importance of ownership of benefits, costs and benefits, and ensuring that the IT systems of the future aren't ends in themselves, but are there to support the delivery of better outcomes for patients, better ways of working for clinicians, um, more information available to everybody to use as part of their daily care. And so that real focus on benefits for the money invested is going to be critically important to the NHS moving forward. You talked about uh, local, uh, local developments. Um, isn't there a danger that ICT developed locally uh, will not integrate fully a, a, in a proper way across the NHS and will lack interoperability? That's a really good question and it's why the role of the commissioning board moving forward is so critically important. Um, the NHS is joined up in terms of the way it uses information. That's true in terms of technical infrastructure but also standards. And the Commissioning Board has a critically important role to play moving forward in maintaining that view of the big picture, both technically and functionally, making sure that national infrastructure is in place as required, making sure that standards are in place and actively used not just by the NHS but by suppliers, um, and really importantly sharing best practice and experience across the NHS. Local organisations need information in order to make sure that they're making good decisions about the best solutions to support their outcomes. And without that ability to share across the NHS, they're not going to be able to do that. So the Commissioning Board has a critically important role to play. And, and a key local organisation uh, will be the clinical commissioning groups, of course, which will come into, well, take on their full uh, commissioning responsibilities uh, by uh, the first, uh, second quarter of two, uh, 2013. Um, have they got the required knowledge? I mean, their focus, their, their clinicians, their focus has been uh, or is going to be uh, on patients primarily and on clinical pathways. Um, are they going to be equipped with the, the, the right knowledge and, and, and vision, really, of how ICT can be used to be able to take on that part of the job? Again, the commissioning board will provide an important role in supporting them, but they need to be. I think that's the point. Um, we all know that you wouldn't expect any, any organisation to not see IT and not to see and understand how IT and information can help them to deliver whatever outcomes they're trying to deliver. And CCGs can be no different from that. You know, it's absolutely critically important that clinicians, I mean clinicians do in many cases know best what's required. Now it's not about clinicians necessarily understanding how to deliver the IT, but that ownership of the requirement, the ownership of what's needed and required, the understanding of the need to own and deliver and, and to take that ownership of the solutions, but often delivering through others who might be specialised resources within CCGs themselves, might sit in commissioning support organisations, there might even be times when they ask for support through the centre. But the ownership is what we can't take away. So CCGs obviously have to be equipped with that overall leadership skills, the understanding of what IT and information can do for their businesses, and that ownership of the requirements. We can't take that away from CCGs. We have to work with them to make sure that they do have those skills. 
Otherwise, we're going to end up sort of back where we started with all of this. But IT can't be a bolt-on. Information can't be a bolt-on. It has to be an inherent part of these organizations as they move forward. And, and could you outline the uh, key principles of the future of informatics within the NHS? I talked about some of those already when, in my question about the strategy. Um, but key principles, uh, you know, putting the patient, the user, the clinician, the manager at the center, and making sure that we're designing outcome-based solutions, not technology solutions in and of themselves. Um, and a much improved focus on benefits and value for money, not just affordability, because uh, it's important that we're ensuring that the solutions that we put in place drive to those outcomes. Um, an informed NHS customer, and again, we just talked about that around CCGs. So making sure that CCGs, but importantly provider organizations themselves in the future, take ownership of their requirements and drive to deliver. Um, making sure that the supplier marketplace changes as well so that they take more ownership than frankly they've done over the last few years. You know, for understanding their customers' requirements and delivering solutions which meet those requirements in a way that provides value for money. Interoperability and standards. Uh, you again referred to those in a previous question. But making sure that we don't as we drive towards local ownership, we don't lose the joining up, which makes everything work and allows us to share the information, which is at the heart of what a patient, clinician, manager, researcher needs. So all of those are really important principles that are underpin how we move forward. What would the uh, role of the Chief Clinical Information Officer look like in the future and how will they discharge their responsibilities? I think we'll have to wait and see how that develops to some extent. I mean, but you can see that already in some of the organizations who have Chief Clinical Information Officers. Um, there's always been a role in an organization for somebody who can kind of act as the interface and translate what is wanted and needed into the potential options, opportunities, solutions that can help to deliver that requirement. And that's what I would probably see at the heart of the Chief Clinical Information Officer role. Somebody who understands what's needed from a patient perspective, a clinician perspective, um, but then can translate that requirement into potential opportunities or solutions where information or IT can support the delivery of, of that different set of outcomes. You're here at the Healthcare Strategy Forum. What do you think of that, uh, this, this format? I think it's excellent. Um, it's great to see there's a huge buzz in the room. I walked straight into an environment where people clearly had been talking to each other a lot over the last 24 hours, getting to know one another and listening. A vibrant healthcare marketplace is what we need. And you know, we have in the past told suppliers we wanted a one-size-fits-all thing. We all know the reality is that the NHS needs lots of different things. Um, and so encouraging suppliers to get to know the NHS, to understand local needs, um, so that they can develop their product offerings to meet those needs, that's exciting and, you know, again, a glimpse of what we need perhaps more of in the future. Thank you.